So welcome to another session of Smarter Business Tips at 10. Uh, today's session is how to turn your business into a saleable asset. So I'm with John Denton today. Welcome, John. Thank you, Peter. It's good sure. to be this far south without being on holiday. <laughs> it was all downhill, John. So John <laughs> is a business broker and a business coach specialising in helping people to get their business ready for sale. Uh, I've actually known John for about 12 years now. Uh, we actually ran, uh, way back in the day, Facebook and LinkedIn workshops for about three years. Um, I've also been a part of John's mentoring group for 10 years now. Now, this group has actually morphed into uh, MyBob, which is actually an acronym for Business Owners Board. And he's partnered up with Alan Nelson in MyBob. Now, Alan is a very successful entrepreneur and business owner, and having bought many uh, businesses, bought and sold many businesses. And so today he's going to share with us the essentials of getting your business ready for sale. How to turn your business into a saleable asset. So first question I've got for John is how did you actually get into business broking? Thank you Peter. Yes, that's a very interesting question. Uh, many years ago I had a training business and uh, took on a partner after seven years of running that business to basically build it up and sell it. And we built it up nicely, we had a lot of good advice, made it a really good profitable business. And then with the help of a franchise, or it was part of a franchise, uh, we put a price on it and took it to the market. After five months of trying to sell it, um, spending early mornings, late nights, and getting into a whole lot of detail with people, it never sold. Yeah, right. And at that point, I was ready to slip my wrists and walk away. And then I got advice from a good friend who referred us to a business broker. We hadn't thought of using a business broker. We went to see the business broker and we went to see one of his competitors. We went with the one that was referred, who put an extra 25% onto the price of the business that we just failed to sell it at. Right. And we said, you can sell it, you happily pay your commission. Yeah, right. And we were told it's a process. What sells businesses is following a process. Right. And so we went through the process. I tried to book the system a few times and got slapped back into place. And at the end of it all, the business went on the market and we got the full price for it. Right. And I learned so much in that process about how little most business owners know about how to value a business and how to go about selling it and prepare it for sale. Yeah, right, okay. And so I decided that was my niche that I was gonna get into to work with business owners in. And um, yes, it's been really, really good. Mm. I kept going back to the brokers that had sold our business yeah. and saying, what do you think of this business? How much will this be worth? Okay. And in the end, they got fed up with me pestering them all the time and said, go and do the course at Rewa, right. learn how to sell houses and then come to us and we'll train you to sell businesses. And that's how I got into it. So I thought, well, if I'm gonna get business owners, businesses ready for sale, yep. why not be able to sell them as well? Yeah, right, okay. And so look, I think the top of mind thought for people is, how do you determine the value of a business? And I know just the other day, I asked you that very same question. Um, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere, folks, but uh, I was really curious. I wanna know, how do you determine the value of a business? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a big question, and um, I could spend a couple of hours talking about all the different options and the, the things involved, but putting it as succinctly as I can, when most small businesses say under five mil sell, it's actually the assets of the business that sell. And the assets of the business are the plant and equipment, saleable stock and the goodwill. Right. And then the next question usually is, so how do we determine the goodwill? So with small businesses, it's all based on profit. You know, in real estate, they talk about location, location, location. Mm -hmm. In business, it's about profit, profit, profit. So what we do is, we get the financials of the business. We look at the amount of cash that the business is generating for the owner. Okay. So, you know, you take on a good accountant. The accountant's job is to minimize your tax. Yep. How does he minimize your tax? By minimizing the profit. Right. When you come to sell the business, you want to show them maximum profit. Okay. So we undo the things that your accountant's done. And we put what's called ad backs back into the p &L statement right. into the profit. Yep. Things like depreciation, which is not cash out of the business, it's an allowance that the tax office allow you to deduct 
to put aside towards renewing your plant and equipment. Right. I don't okay. know many business owners that do that. That's another. Yep. So we work out what the adjusted net profit is for the business. And then we look at all the non-financial factors about how attractive the business is, what the spread of clients is, if it's location dependent, what is left on the lease. There's a whole myriad of things. Yeah, right. Okay. And that's why Alan and I run a half-day workshop on, on this sort of stuff because we go through examples and right. explain it in a lot more detail. Yeah, okay. So, okay, so John John actually does run half-day workshops on this, so we'll be putting a link in the uh, comments thread so you can have a look. And if you're located in Perth, you'll be able to uh, join in on that workshop. Um, and just by the way, if, if these business tips uh, add value, uh, please give us a thumbs up. That's awesome. Um, love it. Spread the word. You know, help us to um, uh, share this knowledge. So, um, yeah. Okay, so now the other thing is that I know that most business owners don't end, you know, start a business with an exit strategy, and, and so, yep. and that's where you know you, your strength lies is helping them into to developing that. But one of the things is that I think business owners, if they haven't been strategic in their thinking, they don't have that exit strategy. But we all want to maximise our value of the business. So how do you actually? Increase the value in a business. How, how do I get as much as I can? I worked the business like for me for eleven years. How do I increase the value? Hmm. Increase the profit, which okay. is a double whammy because you want the profit anyway. Yeah. So it starts with the profit. If anything you can do to get the profit up yeah. is going to add to the value. And the other thing with that as well is that when the so there's the profit, then there's an ROI factor which accountants and people call the multiplier. Okay. So the actual value of the business is a multiplier of the profit. And the thing is that if you increase the amount of profit, you also increase the multiplier. So it's a double whammy. Yep. So the number one to think, thing to think about is the profit, you know, and with that, you can, you should know the numbers in your business. Yep. So you know where the profit's coming from, you know, you know, different ways you can tweak the profit. That's the sort of thing we do with business owners board, you know, and the members in there, we work with them to get, the profitability up yeah and then you've got to look at the non-financial factors to make it actually saleable you know so it doesn't need it doesn't want to be owner dependent and you need systems in there you need you know business to be able to run without you being there yeah yeah a lot of times we get asked to sell or i get asked to sell a business which turns out not to be a business it's a practice yeah yeah you know, because it's built around the owner. Yes, yeah. I remember you sort of uh, mentioning this in some of the workshops that we've done because I've, I've been a part of uh, my Bob for uh, it's nine or ten years now mm -hmm. and, and seen the growth. And, and for me, it's always been the gems. You know, a lot of people, <clears throat> I don't know, they're looking for the epiphanies when, you know, if they join a group like yep. that, and epiphanies are great. However, if the one little gem you get makes a difference and moves your business forward, that in itself is just Massive value. So, but I remember you bringing that distinction between a practice and a business, and I and I've seen business owners have that epiphany just in that recognition of that. Yeah, and so a practice is built around an expert, a business is built around systems. You know, so a business will run without the owner having to be there. A practice, if you're a brain surgeon or you're practicing cryogenics or something like that. Mm -hmm. If you're not there, if you take holiday, then the business stops. Yep. The cash flow stops. <clears throat> Having said that, you can turn a practice into a business. Yes. But it needs to be a conscious decision and you need to be prepared to let go of stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. And, and you would see that a lot with uh, tradespeople, um, but you've seen the flip side of that with, you know, tradies who are running, it's dependent on them, and other ones who have grown their business, I've seen that with a few electricians, plumbers and so forth, where, mm. you know, their business is no longer dependent on them. They're still active in the business, of course, um, but that's their choice, um, but they've managed to get it to that stage. Yeah, um, it's, again, no business owner is an expert in all things that mm. make a business work. Yep, yep. And if you're the person that's delivering the service like a tradie, mm. then it's difficult to let go of that. Yes. And start thinking about the business as a business. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, there was a book, um, oh, it alludes me, <clears throat> The Mechanic, famous author. hate that awkward moment on screen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll come back to me. The guy who wrote about, um, he was using the uh, pastry cook, uh, the cake shop owner, as an example. Oh, oh you're talking about Tom O'Toole. 
No. No, okay. No. Move on. Then. Okay, move <laughs> on. Um, okay, so and you just mentioned in there about systems. Now, I'm, I'm a systems freak. I systemize everything. Absolutely, um, yeah. Right down to making coffee in the morning, uh, <laughs> which does my wife's head in. Um, but, yeah, it, it's fascinating. And, and because of the work I do, because when we take on doing website digital marketing for people, um, we find out a lot about the business, the business owner and, and their strengths and weaknesses, whatever. And I see that shortfall for many businesses yep. um, with just not having the systems in place, um, which, you know, makes it difficult to, to let go. Well, systems is an acronym for save yourself time, energy, money and stress. You know, so if you've got good systems in place, you save all those things. Right. Say that again. <laughs> save yourself time, energy, money and stress. Love it. That's what systems do in a business. Right. But when a buyer is looking to, to buy a business, after they've looked at the financials, which always comes first, they look at the systems and say, yeah. well, yes. could I walk into this business and the business will run? Yeah. You know, if the business owner is doing everything, then I'm going to have to do what the outgoing business yes. owners do. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I know you're big on systems and you have to be. Yes. And that's essential. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it does two things, doesn't it? it? It frees me up from having to do certain aspects, um, and it also minimises the cracks. You know, as we scale a business and get bus busier, um, if you don't have those systems, mistakes, cracks appear. Yeah, good systems ensure the quality of what you're delivering. Yep. That things don't fall through the cracks. You don't end up doing rework and having to fix things up, mm. which is all time and money. Yeah, you know, Ray Kroc, who took the McDonald's business. Yep. and made it into what it is today. I mean, he said, if you have intelligent systems, you don't need intelligent people. <laughs> nice line. <laughs> well, you know, but the point is yes. very clear. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, biggest mistakes business owners make? Yes, putting stuff through their financials, which they shouldn't. No. So the first thing mm. we tell business owners is get your financials cleaned up. Now, this can take three years. Right. You know, it's why business owners need to be thinking about getting their business ready for sale all the time. Yes. And if it's ready for sale, it's well worth keeping. Mm. You know, build it as though you're going to keep it forever, but could sell it tomorrow. Yeah. And it starts with the financials. Get them cleaned up. Don't put any personal stuff through. Mm. Uh, don't take cash out of the business, things like that, because A, you're reducing the attractiveness of the business and it's illegal anyway. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so get the financials structured as well so that they send a good message to a buyer. Mm. So it's got to be clean. Yes. The other thing is building the business around themselves, which we just talked about. So it needs to be systemized. They need to extract themselves from the business and they don't, they won't let go of things. Yeah. Makes it difficult to sell. Yeah. So they're the big ones, really. Okay. okay. And I mean, I, I've sort of applied that in a, a small way in, in looking at, you know, the time of the day where my time goes, you know, uh, going back a few years, I was spending a lot of time with support and it's like, okay, how do I free myself? So, you know, yeah. what I did was I changed things incrementally. So I identified that that was an area where I was losing a lot of time. Uh, so we set up a support portal. I've got a um, support staff, two staff now. And so I've, I've actually freed myself totally from that. It runs Absolutely. itself. And, and the next stage was admin tasks. So I'm in the process of freeing myself from that. Yeah. So, and I see what you're saying about it taking three years because some of these changes are incremental. You can't change them overnight and they won't be perfect. By making it incremental, you're perfecting the process. That's right. Um, yeah, it's not a, yeah. a one-off thing. It's a continuous improvement yeah, yeah, yeah. process. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Cool. So you've given me this um, incredible mind map. You won't be able to see it, people, but there it is. Um, so this is John breaking everything down. So he's also a uh, systems freak. Um, Love mind maps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're both software geeks, by the way. So um, uh, we're always sharing software tools online that that help us to improve, um, you know, running our businesses. Um, you know, mind mapping software and process software and uh, communication platforms and all that sort of thing. So uh, uh, we suffer serious shiny object uh, syndrome. Well, the great thing is there are so many applications and things around these yes. days and so many ways you can automate things in the business. Yes. Right? yes if yeah. you know about them and if you consciously want to do that. Yeah, yeah. So look, is, does anybody have any questions that they wanted to uh, pop in the chat feed? Because, um, you know, we're, we're online. Let's uh, let's get some conversation uh, running. Oh, thanks, David Kavanagh. Um, we, we look good. 
Um, you, you should have said look sexy, Peter. Um, but look, again, if you think this is adding value, if you can give us a thumbs up, share it, that's awesome, love it, spread the word. But questions, please, if you've got any questions at all about getting your business ready for sale, how to turn it into a uh, saleable asset, shout out now or forever hold your peace. Otherwise, um, we'll, we'll keep talking. Yes, we'll keep talking. <laughs> yes. And uh, look, John does have uh, these workshops available. We'll actually put some links in the uh, comments thread. Um, oh, what if I had a comments thread? Oh, you don't have a <laughs> comments thread. Okay. Might have technical issue. After this Facebook Live, John will put some links in the uh, comments thread. Yeah. Um, why don't you just refresh? Just hit, uh, hit refresh. This is why we stopped doing Facebook and LinkedIn workshops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that got laborious. We uh, David. David. Oh, David Kavanagh. <laughs> Funny you should ask that, David. Just before we went live, I made the comment that um, this was a Microsoft ad. Oh, now we're listening to ourselves. <laughs> so um, yes. Tracy Lowe, so does that answer your question, David? And Tracy, uh, what are the easiest... There's John listening to me on the Facebook Live. Tracy Lowe, so does that Tracy Lobesha, what are the easiest businesses to sell now? I'm just going to shut John's thing off. Hit mute. Go down to sound. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Tell me what I would do. Okay. <laughs> so it might have technical issue. So Tracy, getting back to your question, uh, her question is: What are the easiest businesses to sell now? What are the hardest businesses to sell? Good question. What are the hardest businesses to sell? Uh, retail, right. um, <laughs> video hire businesses. Um, <laughs> Just because there's no demand for these sort of yeah. businesses and retail businesses are struggling a, a little bit to, yeah. to show a profit. But businesses where it's based around the owner, mm. businesses where there isn't a good spread of clients, and this is a thing we didn't talk about in the profit uh, and the yeah. valuing. Yeah. When we're valuing a business, we look at the profit, but we look at all the non-financial factors as well. And then it becomes a what's the risk to that profit? Well, if the business is based around the owner, that's a big risk. Yeah. But also, if the business is based around one or two big clients, mm. then that's a risk as well, obviously, yeah. because if one client yeah. goes away, you know, yep. Yep. you've lost your business. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, having a really good spread of clients. Mm. And again, suppliers or uh, de depends on the business. There's a lot of different permutations. Mm. Um, what, what about, um, I, I can remember having conversations with you years ago, um, you know, about manufacturing, industrial, commercial, that, that, so is, that, is there any breakdown in that particular area or not or what? Again, it comes to the profitability and what, what a business is manufacturing, good businesses um, that always, a sort of generalisation, but always sell well are things like wholesale businesses, you know, because they're simple businesses to run. Yep. I sold a beautiful wholesale business some years ago in the cleaning products business. So they're consumables, right. you know, so there's a continuous demand for them. Mm -hmm. The business ran on one, on the owner. He went in from like 7.30 to get deliveries out. He had a contract truck driver. Yep. Um, he took orders off the computer and off the, the fax machine and put them into the system. And the system basically ran the business. Yeah, right. He owned the premises as well, oh, beautiful. which was absolutely brilliant. So he had a warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. And then by midday, he went home, diverted the phones to his mobile, yeah. and that was it five days a week. Right. And he was netting over 300000 a year. Fantastic. You know, so we got yeah. a really good, that sold really, really well. Yeah, right. So and businesses that are simple, yeah. preferably five days a week, so they're not demanding on the owner's time. Mm -hmm. um, yep. We have more questions. Okay. Um, so we have uh, Aaron Malik. Hello, Aaron. Um, a client, a real estate agency owner, is thinking of selling his practice. Uh, any tips and advice on how to best prepare prepare for that? To sell a real estate business? Yeah, is an agency owner, a real estate agency owner. A real estate agency. Again, tough one. The only people that are going to buy a real estate agency are probably real estate agencies. Mm. And 
the thing with real estate agents is the value in those is in rent rolls yeah. and property management because yeah. it's you know low risk continuous mm -hmm. income whereas real estate is based on the, the next sale where's the next sale coming from yeah right so very yeah. difficult to Just, sell yeah um actually aaron's actually stated another question by the way he is a property management biz not a home site oh my god well, so that, that answers your question, Aaron, that <laughs> he has a rent roll and that's where the value is. Exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. what you sell and it'll be a multiplier yeah. of what the um, rent roll right. income is per year. Okay. Okay. Cool. And then it just depends on what kind of uh, rentals they are, yep. whether they're short term, long term and so on. So there's a few okay. factors come in that determine the multiplier. Okay. Um, Aaron, you might want to uh, get this guy to give John a uh, shout out after the fact and do an intro. Um, we'll be putting up a link to the uh, workshop. Um, it's a half day workshop. Um, it might be well worth this guy uh, connecting up with John and mm. just maximizing because the bottom line is look, we, we, we all work really hard. We, we, we bust our guts and sometimes I wonder uh, about <laughs> the sanity so of uh, owning our own business. But Businessownersboard.com.au Okay. Click on the contact us tab. Yep. Yeah. So uh, alternatively, short short uh, circuit that mybob.com.au as well. Um, so mybob m y b o b dot com dot au, and you can find out all about the workshops. The events are there. Um, there's some events that have got a line through them, a broken link, but there is a working link in the bottom. We didn't get that fixed before this uh, <laughs> event. Um, so. Hopefully that answers your question. Let's just go on. <laughs> David, David Kavanagh is definitely off topic. Uh, Surface Pros rock, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Max. Um, but anyway, um, Aaron has asked again, so any specific tips? So I would recommend you, you definitely go to the website, show this guy the website, share this um, Facebook Live with this guy so we can see the conversation is probably a really good idea, Aaron, and get him to uh, hook up. Um, so Tracy Loebscher has a question, but I'm just going to make sure I scroll back up. Ah, Stephen Wilkinson asked a question. How do you value a business? Well, we did actually cover that. Uh, from your, He goes, from my understanding, is it three times the annual profit plus stock? There, no. There is no... Um rule of thumb there is no standard multiplier it all depends on all those risk factors to the business and the profit and that's why it takes a half a day workshop to explain all of that yeah there are so many different factors involved that yeah. determine the multiplier there's no rule of thumb yeah yeah and, and, and oh, sorry Go there on. was something else to the question uh no so how do you value business understanding three times no that's it for Stephen's question so does okay. that answer that question if not pop another comment in the um, uh, thread there Aaron uh, Stephen um, now we'll just scroll down uh, what are we looking for Tracy Loebscher asks what are the things to consider for gyms personal trainer businesses I have a friend who has a long-term plan to sell. So gyms and personal trainer businesses. Mm. Mm. Again, it comes back to the profit and things like the profit, how long the business has been going, what does the owner do in the business? You know, is the owner the personal trainer? Yep. Uh, because if he is, when you take the owner out, it's like a practice, you're taking yep. the expert out, you're taking the point of difference out. So it needs to be... The owner needs to separate himself from the, the business. Yes. And again, I mean, gyms can be good in that you've got regular monthly income, mm. like my membership that I'm paying, you know. Yep. It's, <laughs> it's not costing the gym anything right, to, to look after you don't me. actually go. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm going to quit because I haven't lost any weight being a member. Right. You know? um, but anyway, yes, they can be pretty good businesses. Again, it comes back to let's have a look at the financials. Mm. Let's have a look at the non-financials in terms of all those other things I mentioned. Yep. So, yep. but happy to have a look at it. Yeah, contact yep. me through the website. Yep, yep, great, excellent. And follow it up. Um, and Erin, Emith, thank you very much. Michael Gerber. Oh, yes. That was the book I was referring oh, to. Okay. So, uh, yeah, thanks for that, Erin. Really appreciate that. Fantastic um, book, everybody. Every business owner should read Oh, it. absolutely. It, it's yeah. like, it's the starting point, I think, for personal developing business. Um, and, and, and I see it all the time, you know, because we work with startup businesses, uh, you know, as well as businesses that have been in for years. And, and we see the growth. And obviously, that's our job is to online help them grow their business. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 
and you know some people just aren't seeing those fundamentals and don't get that and you, you have to have that epiphany you That's really do the bible of business just yep. before i forget i want to mention franchises uh, we haven't had a question about franchises but oh. if you're a franchisee i sometimes get people phone me up and say look i'm thinking of buying a business it's a whatever franchise in a shopping center or mm -hmm. something and i go to lengths to explain that if you're getting into a franchise you don't own a business you're not a business owner yeah you are basically a franchisee you're managing a business for the franchisor yep and you're paying them for the privilege to do that mm -hmm. and if it's in a shopping center i would really really look at that very carefully because yep. you're probably going to be working seven days a week or paying penalty rates for people to work in the business you're going to have to open according to what the shopping center wants yeah and some shopping centers believe it or not if your profit or turnover goes over a certain amount they put your rent up right you know and you're paying a percentage to the franchise or and but you don't actually own anything yeah the franchise or owns the brand owns the systems the products and even where you've got like we were in a training franchise yep very very good franchise or in our case but even the database that we built, which is where the value is in a training business, mm. if you're selling a training business, you're selling the client base. Yeah. Um, but the franchisor actually owns the client base. Mm. Right. We don't. And right. so you don't actually own anything in a franchise. You're managing a business for someone else for a period of time yeah. called the term. Yeah. And if they, and if you don't perform to their criteria, they can kick you out. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I yeah. hate it when I hear these. Sorry, but this is a bit of a yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thing know. of mine. I've heard you say this. The, um, <laughs> you hear franchisors advertising their franchises, yeah. and they talk about you becoming a business owner and owning your own business. Mm -hmm. You don't. Mm. Yeah, you own nothing. Yeah, yeah. Tracy's uh, made the supporting comment there. I uh, totally agree about franchises. You're at the mercy of the franchisors. And, and as you mentioned, you know, you actually had a good franchisor, and there are good franchisors, but you, there are. I suppose you, the summary of that is do your due diligence, know your full costs and your limitations. Absolutely. Yeah. And talk yeah. to other franchisees. Yes. You've got a 14-day calling up period oh. where you can do all these checks and talk to the franchisees that are in the business they're the best people to tell you yeah, yeah. what the franchise is like yeah because there won't be any gloss and there are good ones and there are some very profitable ones yes. and they can be sold but yep. you need to do your own work yep yep so uh david Kavanagh's made a uh, comment i'll just uh, read through that good valid points the same as when t uh Becker sold his business if the business needs the main guy to be there this speaker yeah yeah no absolutely valid um the business owner doesn't come with it when it's sold um okay so we've got any more uh, questions please take advantage of this i'll just scroll through and um thanks sam appreciate your uh, feedback there um just check my notes yep do that i'm just scrolling <clears throat> through uh note to self add to notes prepar preparatory notes <laughs> get guest speakers um sound turned off so you can read the notes as well um so but if do, people want a copy of that mind map Yep. which is basically everything you need to be thinking about in a business on one sheet of paper. That's why I love mind maps. Yeah, right. Um, then again, just contact us through the website and ask for the mind map. Yep. And yep. give me some means to um, yes. send it to you. Yep, yep. So, yeah, so this uh, mind map is uh, pretty uh, intense. It's not the right word, but um, detailed. Mm. Um, so, yeah, lots of information, and it's some really good thought prompters on there uh, for you to drill down into and consider. Because, you know, as business owners, like you said earlier, you know, we don't know everything. You, you know, most most people are good at their skill set, whatever that is, and we have to learn Sorry. the admin, the marketing, the sales, or, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. There's so many things to consider. Yeah. But having that available as a starting point for a checklist is, is absolute gold. So, um do make a comment or a, uh, a like or a share or whatever to um, be able to request that, or you can go to mybob.com.au. Okay, so are there any more questions? So come along to one of our half-day events and yep. we'll go through a lot of case studies and Alan will talk about a lot of his uh, mm. experience in selling businesses, his yep. businesses. Yeah, we haven't Thanks. really spoken about Alan. Um, so Alan Nelson of, uh, well, I don't know the name of the business. I know a couple of the names of the businesses he's owned. I don't know if he'd want us to mention them here, but I know he's in the rail industry. Yes, his passion is playing with trains. Yeah, yeah big I think ones. he had a train set as a kid, but yeah. <laughs>
So at one time he had four rail businesses. Right. One yeah. of which was the Spirit of the West, the restaurant train. Mm -hmm. And um, lost him a lot of money. Yep. <laughs> but it was his passion. He fell in love with the business. Yes. And one of his mantras is never fall in love with the asset. Yes. You know, because um, he stuck with it longer than he should have done and it wasn't making him money. Yep. Um, but yes, he's been in the rail game. He's been in the truffle business, limousines. Um, it just... Uh, yeah, the, build, the building industry and the recycling, recycling waste products and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So, um, so please, you know, if if you're if you haven't considered what to do to get your business ready for sale, get into that workshop for your based in Perth. Uh, if you need help in any way in getting your business ready for sale, be at the workshop or contact John direct through yep. my Bob. Um, and as John mentioned, he runs a group called. Uh, business Owners Board, uh, which is a fascinating model and, and really helping businesses to grow the business. As I said, I've been a part of that for I think it's either nine or ten years now. That has morphed into my Bob, and mm. I've got massive value, still a current member. And so we've we'll got a couple of different levels that yep. we run. Okay. Um, and it's about you know, working on your business and getting help from other business owners, yep. just, you know, the value of that, but also experts that we bring in to give new ideas and yep. help. Yep. So, and, and you get one on one coaching. Yeah. Okay, great. As well. So, yeah. Okay. Hi, Pete Godfrey. How are you doing? Uh, bye, Pete Godfrey. We're about to um, bow out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just in wrapping up, if there's any more questions, please post them now. Um, otherwise, we hope this has added value and made a difference for you. Um, if you want to join our group, uh, Smart Tank Mastermind, I'll put that link in the uh, threads uh, once we're done. Um, so you can join that group and that way you can stay up to date. Uh, if you think a friend or colleague will uh, benefit from this, uh, please do give us a thumbs up. That's awesome. Love it. Spread the word. We'd really appreciate that. I also uh, get these videos transcribed and I load them up to my website. So you can just go to smarterwebsites.com.au, smarterwebsites.com.au. And this interview series, I've decided to uh, call this the Smarter Interview Series. You see <laughs> what I'm that. doing there, yeah. <laughs> Anybody that knows me well knows everything smarter or smarter. Show it a sick lack of imagination. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can go to my website and check out this and hundreds of other blog posts. So is there any final questions? And the Bob website, by the way, is a smarter website. website. Thank you. Good on you. Right. Yeah, funny that. Um, so we hope this helps. If you need any help, you can either give myself a shout out or John a shout out. So that's Peter Butler from website, Smarter Websites here and John Denton from? Mindbob.com.au. And we ask you, he is a legend, and we our catch cry is go and work smarter. <laughs>